What's up YouTube? This is DWS Darius and what you're looking at right now is the 40 gallon reef tank. Now this tank has been running for now about two months now and I'm just loving the outcome of this tank. Now I have a lot to talk about about this tank and I won't be able to fit it all into one video. So what I decided to do was give you different videos talking about different topics with my saltwater tank. So in this video I'm just going to talk about my livestock and my overall experience in the saltwater fish keeping. And in the next video, maybe later on this week, I'll talk about my equipment as far as lighting and um, filtration and every other thing like that. But for now, we're talking about the livestock and just my overall experience with this tank. Okay, so first off, I want to talk about fish. So right away, you guys can notice my two clownfish. Now, I pretty much told myself that I won't get a reef tank if I'm unable to keep clownfish. And the reason why is because we all know after that movie, Finding Nemo, these fish has just become legendary. So I think it would just be awesome to keep these fish and to be able to show them to other people that don't really know too much about the hobby. And also because these fish are just greater, great starter fish. I mean, they're super easy to care for and they're extremely beautiful and social. I think mine is a mated pair because when I stick my hand in the tank, they both will defend their little territory and fight my hand. So um, yeah, that's really awesome with these fish. The next fish we have in here is a short tooth whip tail. Now this was my first mistake. When I went to the local fish store, I um I was told that this was a banana ras. And when I got home, I did my research, I found out that it was nothing nowhere near a banana ras. It's not no type of ras. It's the exact opposite. This fish gets eight inches and it's a 40 gallon tank. So that's my first mistake right there, that fish. However, he is beautiful when I only have the blue lights on, that yellow streak on his body just glows. And I really love that, but this fish gets too big, so at the end I will have to get rid of him. But he is nice while I can enjoy him now, very active. Now if I take the camera to the back, you can see my Watchman Goby. This is a pink star Watchman Goby, as you can see. There's a skunk cleaner shrimp actually cleaning his back. Let me see if I can come to the other side. Okay. So yeah, that's... He's the newest fish to this tank. I actually had a, I first started off with a different type of goby, but he jumped out and landed on the top of my little hood. So that was a sad story. But um, yeah, I replaced it with this guy. He's, he looks more better. He has a lot more color than my last one, but he's still a little shy. But I guess shyness keeps him safe. So yeah, that's another interesting, awesome fish. Okay, so after fish, we have the inverts, and um, the inverts just bring a ton of activity to this tank as well. Now, as you already met, I have a skunk cleaning shrimp. I have a pair of those, and the thing I love about these is just that they're always out, and they're even willing to clean my hand. Now, I'm not sure if he's going to let me do it now, but I'll, I'll try. Get that out the way, okay. When I do water changes, I stick my hand in there and he'll come on my hand and clean my hand as you can see now. So I just love the interactions that these shrimp have. They're never hiding. They're always out and about. The, only, the other one is actually on my hand. You can feel them now. So that's why I just love these. I can't focus it with one hand, but that's just awesome. So yeah, the skunk cleaner shrimp are awesome. They're really friendly with me and I just love that. And besides them, I have a couple of neurite snails. They're just like the freshwater neurite snails. As you can see, those white dots all around the back are all eggs. So yeah, they're doing their breeding thing just how the freshwater neurites would do. I also have three turbo snails. Now if I can spot them, I have one right here and two more somewhere in there. They are pretty big and as you read up, they do knock over corals. So that has been a little problem, but when you get your coral, corals nice and stable, you don't have to worry about it. And then to top it off with inverse, I have a couple of hermit crabs wandering around. That's one right there. And just all over, I have about close to 15 hermit crabs. And um, these hermit crabs are just very active. I love them. The only thing is that they will fight each other. And I have one that killed one of my um, one of my different, I forgot the name of that snail, but he killed one of my new snails that I bought and um, stole his shell. So that was a sad story, but they bring lots of activity to the tank. 
Okay, so before I get on to talking about the corals, another mistake that I made with this tank was this was my first tank where I attempted to add fish that were bought online. So I went to Pet Solutions because they offered the lowest price and I bought four fish, three of which died the next day and the fourth died today. So um, that sucked. My first time buying fish, and I guess because I went cheap, I took a big loss. But with me, I think I'll no longer buy fish online, especially since my fish room is pretty packed already. I really don't have to worry about it. But if there was to come an opportunity, I don't think I'll take it because that was like $100 in the trash. The only thing that survived from that order was my three triple snails. Even my, um, I forgot the name of those snails. I had a different type of snail. And that's the one who got his shell hijacked from the hermit crab. So for me, no more ordering online. That was my second mistake with this. Okay, so now moving on to the corals. Now these corals are just very entertaining as well. Now for me, I went for all basic hardy species of coral. So I have polyps, mushrooms, and multiple soft corals and one LPS coral. So let me just take you around showing them. So um, right here, I'm loving the way this, I have this in my tank for about a week now, and I already have about two new heads. So I just love how this yellow button polyp it's just constantly growing and the way it moves is constantly active. Right next to him I have an eagle's eye zoa. Now when I bought this it looked terrible because the postal service um, misdelivered my package and it came to a day later than it was supposed to so it looked a little bad but now it's recovering pretty nicely. Up here this right here is my most productive coral. This is pulsing exenia. And this coral is just growing like crazy. When I first bought it, it had six polyps. Now, over there it's roughly 30. I had another piece over here, but I just fragged it today and it's not looking too good. But hopefully it comes back. That was my first attempt fragging. So we move over to the next rock and I have trumpet coral. This is an LPS coral. Now, um, it doesn't really get too much activity as the rest. However, at night, it, does, it is like a nocturnal coral. So at night you will see his, tentacle, his tentacles come out and then I would feed him, I would spot feed him some um, brine shrimp and stuff like that. So that's awesome to watch on him. And then to the next rock, this is one of my newest corals, the Devil's Hand Coral. And um, ever since I got it, the polyps have gotten a little longer, but it's only been in this tank for about a week. And just all around the tank, I have different mushrooms. The, mostly made red mushrooms. Now I wanted to have them all grown as well but mushrooms do what they want to do so I was able to get one to stay on the wall but the rest just are all over the tank. I have one over here just everywhere red mushrooms. One big one back there so yeah mushrooms just doing what they want to do and I also have some more polyps and zoas coming in so I'll update you on those when they do come. Okay, so now for my overall experience with this tank. Now I've been keeping this tank for about two months and um, it's just been a wonderful experience. I love watching the corals grow. I love watching the activity of these fish and it's just awesome to see a reef being produced in your basement. Now um, when I first had the idea of going into Saltwater World, three things prevented me. That was the price, the um, difficulty, and my lack of experience. Now right away I was able to brush off my lack of experience because of you great YouTubers, Aaron's Aquariums, Mass Aquariums, and a few of you other guys just helped me with that. So I was able to cross that out. The next thing was the difficulty. Now I'm not gonna say that keeping this saltwater tank is easy. However, it's not too much of a challenge. It just takes a little bit more time than the average freshwater tank. So as far as difficulty, it's not a hard tank to take care of. It just takes your time. If you have the time and just the patience, you can really enjoy this tank. And the last thing, the price. Now I can't really fight off the price. The price at first was scary and it still is scary because that price is just still going up. Eventually it's going to stop But when I finish getting all my corals, but I'm just constantly spinning on this tank. However, it does have this rewards. So I'm able to look at this tank for hours and just enjoy it. So for those of you who are thinking about joining the saltwater community, getting your own saltwater tank, if you have your savings good and in shape, 
and if you're willing to spend enough time go for it because this tank is just extremely rewarding okay YouTube so that's just been a little look at my 40 gallon reef tank if you have any questions about anything that I spoke about be sure to ask them in the comments below and in the next video I will talk about my lighting my skimmer my filter my heater my this my that and everything else you want to know so as always don't forget to like comment and subscribe thank you all for watching peace and good night or good morning depending on where you are